Welcome to the Training Ground Guru podcast in association with Huddle. In every episode, we bring you insights into the teams behind the teams in professional football. Coming up on today's episode. I demand a lot from my players, but my players know that I always trust and believe in them. And this is what I give them also the future. Yeah, uh, it's a, a great sentence. I heard this from John Wooden. A good coach can change a game, yeah. A great coach can change a life. Uh, I think this is also interesting. Of course, you, you can improve him on the pitch, but for me, it's also with my coaches around me a big part that we want to improve the players as a human off the pitch as well. I'm Simon Austin from Training Ground Guru, and our guest on this episode is Danny Roll. Danny has established himself as one of the brightest young managerial prospects in Europe. He started out at RB Leipzig and became a pioneer of the coach analyst role. This took him on to Southampton with Ralf Hasenhutl and then to Bayern Munich and the German national team with Hansi Flick. Last season, he became a manager in his own right for the first time and led Sheffield Wednesday to one of the great escapes. When he took over, the Owls were seven points adrift of safety with no wins in ten. By the end of the campaign, they were three points clear of relegation after a remarkable run. Danny told me how that metamorphosis had been achieved and charted his meteoric rise as a coach. We hope you enjoy this podcast and if you do, please give us a follow by your preferred podcast provider. Thank you very much for joining us on the podcast, Danny. Hey, hello. And whereabouts are you speaking to us from? Uh, now my home base is in Leipzig. Yeah, that's the reason why I sit in, in Leipzig on a lake. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, four years ago, the final decision for me and my family. Yeah, uh, When you move a lot in the football business, then you never know what, what happens next. And that was the reason why we said, okay, we want to stay in Leipzig as our home base. Uh, I worked nine years for Leipzig and then... I moved on to different places. So did your family stay in Leipzig while you were working at Sheffield Wednesday? At the moment, yes, because the, the decision in, in October was very quick. Yeah, And then we said, OK, my family will stay at first in, in Leipzig and then we will see what happens after this, the first season. Yeah, and now it's a, it's a difficult one. It's not an easy one uh, to make the decision. I have two boys and uh, the one boy is in the school. And yeah, now uh, let's have a look what we can do, what is the best for the family and of course also for me. And yeah, we will make the final decision in the next uh, few weeks. And we've got the Euros starting and I know you said you're going to be doing some interesting work during the Euros. Yes, uh, I got the the request from ITV and I will go uh, for one week to Berlin and have five games as an expert to speak about the games. Yeah, I think it will be an exciting new new challenge for me. I, I never have this be before, but it's also a, a good experience for me as well. Obviously, you work for the German national team, which we'll come on to later. But what, what do you think are the chances for Germany, the home nation? Yeah, at the moment, uh, the atmosphere is very positive in, in the country. I think this is uh, perfect. I think everybody is looking forward for the tournament. And yeah, hopefully we have a, a great start. In the last tournaments, we, we didn't have a, a good start in the tournament. And I think this is everything. Yeah, if you have a great start in, in such a tournament at home, then uh, you can really uh, improve and you can create a, a special atmosphere. And this is uh, what everybody looking for. And yeah, for this, I cross my fingers for the team. And it's been a difficult few years for the German national team, but do, do you think they're looking much stronger now under Julian Nagelsmann? Well, I think it's always difficult. Yeah, I said this before. Uh, you can have great uh, games before the tournament and you can good uh, have uh, results, but uh, all in all, it's about the tournament and uh, that starts with the first game. And this is the reason why everybody is looking for this first game. Everybody is preparing for the first game and... Yeah, hopefully the team is ready for this, but uh, yeah, I'm very positive that they will have a great start in the tournament. The close season this summer is a, a bit of time to have a little break and spend a bit of time with your family, but have you still been very busy looking ahead to next season with Sheffield Wednesday? Yeah, of course. I think uh, the first week was about my situation. 
uh, had a good conversation with the club. We spoke about uh, my future and then we spoke, of course, about the future of the club, what we can improve, what we can do. Yeah, now it's about preparing the new season. Uh, it means uh, we have to sign new good players. For me, it's about to write the, the schedule for the preseason, to plan the, the friendly games, uh, looking for the opponents. I think it's a lot of the, uh, work to do for, for a manager. And yeah, then you, you can imagine that it's, uh, it's a balance between uh, sometimes you need it off because we know a championship is a tough one. It will be a, a tough new season as well. And yeah, all in all, yeah, it's a good balance for me at the moment uh, to enjoy some days, but uh, I like to work. I'm really looking forward for my first preseason as a manager. This is great to see and I think uh, we will have uh, a lot of good things what we can do. Was it a difficult decision to sign the new contract? Because I could imagine you had offers from other places. Yeah, of course, there were some uh, offers, some requests from, from other clubs. Uh, but for me, it's also about my next step. And I think uh, my journey was not finished after the first season in, in, in Sheffield Wednesday. But uh, the crucial thing is for me how we can improve as a club, how we can improve the squad. And I think this is what I'm looking for. Yeah, this is what I want to try at the moment. It's not always easy at the moment, the, the market, but uh, we, we have some good players in our, in our mind. And this is now convince them, uh, try to get them. And hopefully then we have a stronger squad than in the last season. And I thought of you actually when I saw that Hansi Flick had gone to Barcelona. Obviously, you worked with him for Bayern Munich and Germany. Was there any request to go there with him? Not, uh, not, not this year. Yeah, I think there was uh, some rumors uh, three years ago uh, about this, this step as well. Then there was no, no question mark to join with him. But uh, I think now, yeah, I, I start my own career as a manager. I start my own uh, journey and... It was very clear for me that uh, I want to stay and I want to improve myself as a manager. And yeah, I wish uh, Hansi all the best. Yeah, we are still in contact and I'm really happy for him. It was a little bit also a, a dream for him to join uh, Barcelona. It's a huge club and uh, a great city. And I think he will have a, a great time there and hopefully a successful time as well. And what you did at Sheffield Wednesday last season was unbelievable. I've got some stats here. I think two points from the first 10 games when you came in. Won only one of the first 18 league games. Yet you stayed up. I think it was three by three points in the end. So fairly comfortably. How, how do you reflect on that first season now? Yeah, at first it, it goes very quick when, when I started October there. Uh, I think you, you really never know what what you can do with this group. Yeah, of course you have an idea how you want to play football. You, you have something in your mind. Uh, and I was really looking forward to my first step as a manager. And then you see, okay, we have still uh, 35 games to go. It looks at first uh, yeah, massive. But then, uh, yeah, you start in a, in a new league. I think the championship, uh, it's, a, it's a special one. It's a really strong league. Um, I think for me, uh, behind the top leagues in, from Europe is then immediately the championship. You have a lot of games. And then you have a lot of up and downs uh, during the season. I think that was the, the biggest challenge uh, for me and for, for my team. Yeah, we come always back from uh, some yeah, setbacks. But uh, that was our journey and for me it was important that we always uh, look to our process. I think we improved a lot. We improved very quick as a team, but the results were, weren't good. Yeah, because uh, when you look back, the first six games uh, when I started was just one win. But the direction was, was very good and I think that was for me a positive signal. Uh, my team has a great mentality. They are really open-minded for all the new new things. And especially at the beginning, it was important and the crucial thing that uh, we find the balance between yeah increase the the intensity, but also looking for the for the injuries. Yeah, this is normal when you when you start with a new new philosophy with a lot of sprints and high intensity. Then you have to be always pay attention for the injuries and all in all we managed it well, we had a good load management 
And then we have step-by-step -step, uh, improvement. Uh, I think it was a, a big result against Leicester at home. I think in the extra time we make the equalizer. That was a, for me a key point. And from this point we, we start to take points and, and took points. Then we come closer. We had a fantastic game against Hull uh, at home. Uh, it was the 1st of January. We won uh, 3-0. And then we were really close yeah, from 13 points behind the, the line. We come close to three points. Uh, that was uh, fantastic. But it, for me, it was at this moment very clear that it will be a, a tough uh, challenge until the end because I saw then to our schedule, we played against uh, Southampton, Coventry, some good teams uh, from the top of the table. And then, yeah, we had a, a big game against Huddersfield. Uh, and we lost uh, 4-0. I think uh, this could be a moment where your team drop down and maybe it's then, yeah, raise the, the right flag. But uh, after this game, I had a clear message to my team and I said, guys, we had still 16 games to go and uh, there's a, a big, big opportunity to, to achieve our goals, but it will be a, a tough challenge. And from this moment on, we, we start really to, to win games. I think we had some good signs in the January window with uh, Poveda, Uppu and uh, James Beadle. I think it was also a crucial thing. And I think we, we find the right uh, pieces uh, for our success. Yeah, and then we had a, a great uh, run with a lot of wins, but uh, it was sometimes hard for our for our mindset, especially for the players, uh, even we won from six games, five games, we come not closer or not over the line. Yeah? And it uh, was uh, a big, big challenge to uh, keep going. Don't look to the table, uh, focus to ourselves. And yeah, then we come closer, closer. And then uh, the last uh, difficult moment was after the Stoke game. We, we played well, but it was just a draw at home. And then we knew it's just three games to go. The schedule was not easy to go to Blackburn at home against West Brom and then uh, go away to Sunderland. But I said, guys, uh, if we win and we will win the next three games, then we will stay up. And yeah, at the end, we had our happy end. Uh, I think this described a little bit my mindset as a manager that I'm always positive, I always believe and have trust in my players. That was for me uh, a big, big experience uh, in Munich. Uh, I learned a lot from Hansi how we can lead a, a group in this direction. And this uh, was what I took and this is what I give my, my players as well. And I was looking back in my phone and I messaged Josh Windass on 22nd October. So I think that was your first week, was it, at the club? And I just said, how's the new manager? Because I know he's very interested in coaching, so I know him a little bit. And he said, unbelievable, he will keep us up. And I thought, no chance, but I, I didn't say that. Uh, but how did you win the players over so quickly? Yeah, uh, I think uh, when you arrived in a, in a club, uh, then it was very important for me that I give my players immediately a direction how we want to play and how we can have successful. Yeah, I showed them three ways uh, how we can play football, how we can be control the game. Yeah, of course, uh, one big part was our active front foot defending, high pressing situation. That means always if you have high ball winning situations, you have a uh, a short way to the opponent goal. That was one way. A second uh, way was for me to have a good net for counter pressing, win the ball back. And again, a short way. And the last uh, point, and that was for me a big, big point uh, when I looked to my team before, I want to improve the ball possession. Uh, I saw that the team didn't create uh, chances they didn't have ball possession and it was for me a big part also to the beginning in the in the week when i arrived there that we start immediately to find solutions with the ball have a better net uh, have a, a good structure and yeah this was a lot of topics in the first week the difficult one was that after the first week we had immediately three games in a row in seven days uh, you can't train uh, so much it was a lot of meetings 
And then we had uh, the first win at home against Rotherham that was uh, special. And after this game, the relationship between the team, me and the supporters were very connected. And I think that was uh, a crucial point. I always think that fans and maybe media think that a manager will win over a group by having a big personality, doing big speeches. But I think players actually want a manager who they think is very good and who can help them improve and help the team improve. That, that's what I think they look to. I don't know what you think. Yeah, I think my way uh, to lead a group, it's, uh, yeah, there are two things. Of course, the one thing is that you have to convince your team about the tactical things. Uh, give them a clear idea, identity. I think that was uh, also my first press conference I spoke about. I want to create identity and everybody should know what is now Sheffield Wednesday with uh, the manager Danny Rowe. Uh, and the second thing is, and this is uh, also a big part, uh, how you lead the group and it means for me I always look behind the players as well. Uh, I think every player is a human and from this point you need this connection between your players as well. I believe uh, 100% of this you cannot just look to the tactical things and you uh, looking not to the human behind. Yeah, For me it's always about I, I see at first the positive things from a, from a, a, a people. I'm open-minded for, for all the players. I demand a lot from my players but my players know that I always trust and believe in them and this is what I give them also the future. Yeah, uh, it's a, a great sentence. I heard this from John Wooden. A good coach can change a game. Yeah, a great coach can change a life. Uh, I think this is also interesting. Of course, you, you can improve him on the pitch, but for me, it's also with my coaches around me, a big part that we want to improve the players as a human off the pitch as well. And how did you find out about them as humans? Did you do research before you went in or was it what you did uh, when you got there with your assistants as well? I tried at first to have a, yeah, an individual meeting, uh, to have a conversation, to get a feeling. And sometimes it's not just about to sit in the office and have a speak with the players. Sometimes you, you watch the players, you look to your players on the pitch, and then there is a moment where you can go in or you, you walk uh, uh, to the pitch, then you have one minute where you can speak with your players. I think all the small details and then it's also great to have uh, yeah, people around you, they're also looking like, like you and have the same view and all the uh, information you can collect. And then you have an idea what the players need. Yeah, I think you have some players, they need sometimes a bit more pressure yeah, to improve. Some players, they need more uh, smart words uh, to help them give them more and more belief. I think you have a lot of different characters in your team and I think this is, uh, beside the tactical things, the, the biggest uh, part, how you can improve your team as well. Mm. Uh, do you believe in that thing of having the, the leaders within the dressing room as well who can help you to manage the other players? I'm honest, um, I have in the past different uh, teams around and uh, when I compare this and with Sheffield Wednesday, I must say uh, we had uh, some really good leaders in, in the dressing room. They are different. Sometimes it's not uh, a leader there who is just talking. Yeah? Sometimes it's also a leader who showed with a good performance on the pitch to be a leader. And I think you need the different profiles uh, in your team as well. This is for me, like in my coaching team, I have really, really different profiles uh, as my assistant coaches. It was a big, big part when I bring all the coaches together. Yeah, I know my strength. I know what we need in a, in a group. And I think all in all, you need the strong leaders on the pitch, off the pitch. But to have just leaders in your group, then you can also not win games because you need also some guys that are just, yeah, I will not say just, but they are workers and they, they go and follow the direction. And this balance and this mix you need uh, for a successful team. How do you manage training? Would you lead a session every day? Because I know some head coaches have different approaches. Like I remember Ancelotti, I think he just led the Friday session, the 11 v 11, where they were doing the shape. Honestly, it's different. For me, it's of course clear. I, I, I plan the, the schedule during the week. I give my assistant coaches a clear picture of what I want to see the whole week. Uh, I know the championship, you have not 
so often the week from Saturday to Saturday, you have more the midweek games. But if you have this uh, week from Saturday to Saturday, then it's important that my coaches know the schedule for the week. Yeah, I prepare them the, the topics, I prepare the, the training exercises for them. But uh, on the pitch, I give my my assistant coaches the responsibility as well. Yeah, I think this is a good mix uh, between my assistant coaches, everybody need also a responsibility for a part of the game. This is important. This was my experience as well as an assistant coach. When you have not this responsibility, then I'm convinced uh, over a year, then you will be not happy. You need this. And I think that works very well. For me, it's then important that I push my players in the intensity or give them uh, small details, advices on the pitch. But I have no problem that my assistant coaches uh, lead the training session. My training is very different. It's complex. Yeah, we start with with a warm up, then we have always uh, passing drills. But I always look to prepare the training, not just to train. I always look what we can take from the game, and then we can create some exercises from the game to improve our style of football. And you were talking earlier about your playing identity and you were talking about the pressing. Is that heavily influenced by your time at Leipzig then and the Red Bull model? Yeah, of course. I think uh, when you worked uh, nine years uh, for Leipzig, you will get uh, a good injection from uh, pressing and transition moments. But honestly, uh, in the second year of the Bundesliga, with Leipzig, we improved also with the ball position because when you are stronger and stronger in the league, then there comes a moment where you have more and more the ball. And it means you have to improve as well. And in this part, then yeah, the experience uh, in Southampton was different. Yeah, you were more the, the underdog. Uh, you played more against a stronger team. It was about have your identity. Uh, but you have also to adapt sometimes to the next opponent. And then, yeah, I come to Munich and I think Munich uh, were very successful, uh, especially in the first year when we won uh, seven titles because we had a clear direction what we want to do. Uh, a big part in this time was also that we had a good pressing. But of course, with Munich, you have a lot of ball possession and I improved and developed uh, as well in this direction as well. My style of football how you can have uh, solutions in the final third. That's a big part when you are the assistant coach in Munich. And from all these different uh, stations, you take uh, something. And this is now my identity. Uh, uh, the big topic, it's always for me, uh, active and coverage decisions. This is uh, what I demand for my players and for myself as well, uh, board decisions. I think when you look back uh, to take Sheffield Wednesday in October, I think it was, for example, a bold decision. Yeah, uh, Not everybody maybe uh, take this job uh, as a first manager job. But I, I saw the, the chance and the challenge. For me, it's also clear it was a game uh, against uh, Norwich. Yeah, We didn't play well in the first half. In the halftime, I made uh, four subs. Yeah, this is also for me. Ball decision. I'm then not the coach to just cross the fingers and wait for something happens. Yeah, for me, it's be active, and this is what I demand for me and for my team as well. Yeah, because I, I often don't think of the high possession going with the high press as well. I, I often think of them as being different strategies, but they can work together. Of course, I think uh, in the modern football, you need all the four faces. Yeah, uh, with the ball, against the ball, in the two transition moments, and set pieces. I think this is also a big, big part. Uh, we should not forget this. But uh, when you have a, a good structure against the ball, then you have also immediately a good positioning with the ball because then everybody is in the right positioning. You have target zones where you can make the transition offensive. And to have ball position, it's not just to have ball position. Uh, for me, it's always ball position a tool to prepare the next attacking stuff. Yeah, this is what I showed my players. Uh, this is also what we are looking for in the meetings, yeah, to give my players these points where we can attack. Yeah, sometimes you need maybe the first, second and third pass to load the opponent, but then when the opponent starts to press, then you have to attack and then it's from a really attacking forward, playing forward. 
And then it means uh, we need a good net as well. Yeah, we have to travel together. Yeah, I always speak about we have to travel together. Otherwise, we have big distances between the the players, and then you have not a chance to to come at the counter pressing. And all the the things uh, we improved, and when you also look to our goals in the in the last season, we are very different goals. Uh, we had, uh, for example, against West Brom, I think it was two goals after transition offensive. But against Sunderland, we have both uh, goals we scored. It was ball possession after I think the first goal was after eighteen passes, and the the second one was twenty five passes, something like this. Yeah, I think this is difficult and this is also difficult for the opponent to prepare uh, what, what happens as next. Yeah, I have an identity, I have my clear principles, what I want to see, but I'm open and I'm flexible uh, from game to game. And I think this is for me also a big part to, to improve your team. Are you quite pre-planned in your build-up? So would you have certain moves that, that you do and that are planned and that the players know going into the game? Again, yeah, at first, uh, when you ask me what is your, your shape uh, or your system, for me it's more about uh, that we have uh, principles. And then we come from these principles uh, from game to game to different setups. Yeah, that depends uh, from the opponent, uh, we, at first, we look always uh, how we can build up from the goalkeeper, what makes the most successful to come to the next zone. Yeah, then we're looking what, what which positioning we need. And if we have then uh, the building up from the goalkeeper, then we come to open play. Yeah, the next step is then to find the solution building up against the midfield pressing. The biggest challenge is always the final third because this is you need habits, you need good solutions and you need also the quality of your players because they have to make the decisions and I think this is also a big part uh, we as a manager or we as a coach uh, can give our uh, players a lot of principles we can help them but the decision making on the pitch is about the players and uh, this is for me a, a big part in the training yeah to bring my players always in situation where they have to make decisions I like to have in building up some habits, but uh, I want to see also players they make their decisions on the pitch instead of to say yeah you have to pass always to them or you have always to pass to them yeah the system for me decision making. That that's where I see that a lot of teams can become stuck really in the final third, especially if it's like a low block and the opposition have got back in shape. It can be very hard, can't it? To break down and you might then put a kind of speculative cross in or something like that. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's the tricky bit, as you say. Yeah, of course, uh, the final third, this is the biggest challenge. Uh, you can increase your chance uh, when you have a lot of players in the box, around the box. Uh, I come back to my word, travel together. When you have not uh, a lot of players around the box, into the box, then the chance is less than you have a lot of players into. We scored a goal at home. Uh, I don't know which team it was, but we had nine players around the box uh, and just two players uh, in the rest defense. I think this is a uh, direction what I like, but uh, this is uh, about hard working to come to such a situations. And I think this is the biggest challenge for, for every each team. But then I suppose there's the risk if you lose the ball, isn't it, on the transition. If you have nine players around the area, then you're vulnerable. Yeah, of course. I think this is then also part when I look to the opponent, how my, my structure and building up is. Uh, sometimes, for example, you can build up in a 2-3 positioning because then you have three players in the midfield to go immediately in counter-pressing. Sometimes better to have a 3-2 positioning. Yeah, these are the small details and this is what I prepare uh, during the week with my team and give my team the advice in the meetings. But all in all, yeah, uh, when we speak about the board decisions, yeah, then I'm looking more forward instead of uh, backwards. And I was quite surprised when you took the job in the first place because you were assistant with the German national team before. So, you know, big job. Um, what was your thinking there? Was it a, a difficult decision to take the Shepherd Wednesday job? Uh, at first, I, I felt very... Uh, very much energy in my in my body. Yeah, sometimes when you when you are sacked in in the position, then maybe you you need time and you want to reflect, and you want to have feedback. But for me, I was really 
sharp to have really the first uh, step as a manager. And then of course you see uh, the table, you look at games from the team, but then I saw really the chunks and say, okay, there's so much uh, potential around this club. And I see, uh, and when I saw the pictures from Wembley from the massive supporters, and uh, when I saw that I can implement really my football with my style, with the intensity, and that was the reason why I was convinced that I can help the team. But honestly, in October, I didn't know that you need uh, 53 points to stay up. Yeah, I think uh, that was a little bit uh, the X factor. You never know. I come back to my last uh, speech to, to my players before the Sunderland game. And I said to my team, guys, if we stay in the league and we will do this today, then you will see in the future there will some teams look to Sheffield Wednesday and will say, look, this team took so many points and stayed up. Even they had a, a terrible start. At the end, we had our happy end. Uh, everybody is happy. But now uh, the focus is uh, go forward and look into the next season as well. Our podcast sponsor, Huddle, offer exclusive video and data from the best youth football competitions in the world with Scout Youth Competitions. From under 14s to 21s, scout the best talent playing in the major youth football competitions around the globe. Make the correct scouting decisions with objective data from over 70 competitions, 900 teams, and 11,000 players. For more information, go to huddle.com forward slash TGG forward slash Scout. Spinning right back to the start of your career, so I understand you were a player in the lower leagues in Germany, then you got into coaching very young with Leipzig, is that right? Yeah, it's right, yeah. I played uh, for the under-21 for a club in, in Leipzig beside my my studium in the university, then I had an injury and then I start uh, as a first analyst uh, from Red Bull Leipzig. Then I joined as an assistant coach as well, because it was always for me very important that I have this connection between the meetings, the analyzing and the pitch. Yeah, because for me, it's, this is a crucial thing that you can bring the transfer from the meeting room to the pitch. Yeah. And yeah, that was the reason why I had uh, both jobs. Yeah, I started as an assistant coach and under 16. Then I moved on to the assistant coach under 17. It was very successful in this age. We were the second of the, the German football. Uh, we had the final, we lost the final against Borussia Dortmund, but it was a huge step. And then um, a manager in Leipzig uh, said, okay, I want to have you as an analyst in the first team. I was a bit scared about that I'm just the analyst now for the future, yeah. But it was for me important that I'm the analyst and the assistant coach to bring again uh, the video together with the, the exercises on the pitch. Then I started this by the professional team in Leipzig and then with the um, coach uh, Ralf Hasenhutl, he took me as a second assistant coach and then I was very happy. We had a good relationship, we had a good uh, coaching team around us. Uh, it was fantastic, it was a huge step for me. And then there comes a point uh, after nine years in Leipzig uh, when I said I want to move on, I want to have a new challenge, uh, I want to come out from the comfort zone. And it was then the reason why I moved on with for a to Southampton. Yeah, I think that was also for me personal a big step, a big improvement, a big experience. And it was uh, the, the first years uh, to come to the point and then and this is football sometimes, yeah. Then I got a call from Munich. Then uh, in Munich, Hansi Flick took took over uh, from the assistant coach to the to the manager. That was for me. Then I was the, the first uh, assistant coach from him. Then we were successful, and then uh, it comes step by step, uh, more and more. But during all the time, my feeling to be a manager increased. And uh, it was bigger than bigger. Yeah, I think uh, when I start 
my career, then I was happy to be assistant coach and analyst. Yeah, and uh, I had more and more the feeling that I'm ready to be a manager. And last year, when I finished my pro license, then I said uh, and had a good conversation and an open conversation with Hansi about my future. And then I had the feeling that the time will, will come now to make the, the step forward. But then in, in football, you never know when it's the time when you get the opportunity. And in October, then I got the opportunity and then it was clear for me, I want to do this. I want to start uh, even it's a risk. Yeah, of course. Uh, and I think you were a real pioneer of that coach analyst role because we have started to see that more and more now. Like we had a guy called Mark Leyland on the podcast and he did that with uh, Newcastle. Now he's with Manchester City. Uh, but I think maybe you were the first to do it at a high level. Yeah, I think, um, and this is, uh, I think, a big, big part. Um, an analyst is like a coach, yeah, because you have to understand the football and you have especially to understand what your manager want to have. Yeah, I think there is, is a difference maybe between an analyst who prepare all the, the meetings and who can uh, work with the tools, or you are more a coach analyst where you can really make decisions or help to make good decisions for, for the manager. And uh, in the last years, I always thought like a, a manager. Yeah, I always thought about uh, what I want to do when I'm the manager now. And I think that was helpful. But you should not forget that, especially when you work and you can work with the laptop and with the tools, then you are still a human, a coach with emotions and with all the things. Yeah, uh, I think this is also a big part. Uh, you cannot be just uh, a tactical genie on the laptop, but you need also the human side, how you can teach your group, how you can improve your group, how you can bring all the, the tactical stuff to your players. And I think this is a big part. And I had the feeling that I can do this and um, when I compare now my 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 job, uh, of course, then the biggest and the newest challenge was to lead the group in all the difficult moments. Yeah, as an assistant coach or as an analyst, for example, after the feed, you can sit in the corner, you can listening to the manager, and that's it. But now I have to go in front of the team. I have to be positive. I have to go forward, and I have to believe and give the belief my players. And I think. This is, of course, uh, we are always uh, humans. Yeah, this is also for a manager sometimes not an easy job. Yeah, when you have a big defeat and uh, the next morning you have to go in front of your team. But important is that you have then really the, the belief and the trust in your team and you can do it again and again. And I have a good slogan on the pitch uh, and off the pitch. Yeah, I said to my team uh, two things at first. We cannot uh, change the, the past, but we can change the future. And all in all, there's no time for disappointment. Yeah, uh, It's the same on the pitch. Yeah? If you lose the ball, you can be disappointed and you can say, oh, it was not good. Or you go again and hunt again and you, you get the ball back and then you're happy. Yeah, And I think this is a big, big part of my uh, football style as well. Yeah, because I think back to that game against Ipswich in March when you lost 6-0. And again, looking from the outside, I thought that could be a huge setback. They could be in trouble, but then you didn't, you went again. Uh, honestly, the game in Ipswich was, was, was different. Um, of course, when you look to the paper, then you say, oh, 6-0, bah, a big, big defeat. But uh, I said this in some games uh, that you have two ways uh, to go to Ipswich. They had a good run. You can try to play active and you can try to play your football and you are brave and make bold decisions and you play with courage. And then it could be that it will be after the game a big defeat because they are stronger. Or you go to a game and you say, yeah, okay, let's have a look. We try to play defensive and we stay deep. And then even in this, you can concede the goals. This is not the, the big point for me. The big point is uh, after the games, how you react after defeat. And it was really great to see for my team. Sometimes after defeat, I had in the past some teams, then 
you had a feeling uh, match day plus one oh the team now it's really down but by my team they were immediately on fire by the next training session they had a, a spirit that you feel immediately they want to show again that they are better than the last result and this mindset was fantastic to see fantastic and what are your ambitions for the future going forward? Because you're still young, you're only just 35, your career's been on the up and up. Yeah, football, you can have dreams and you have goals. Uh, of course, uh, five years ago when I left Southampton, uh, I worked in the Premier League and for me, it is a big, big goal to come back to, to the Premier League. I like this, this league, I like the English football. Yeah, that was also the reason. I said always, uh, if there's a chance to go to the UK, I want to do this. Yeah, this is uh, a big part. Uh, I want to work on the high, high level. Now as a manager, I worked on the high, high level as assistant coach with Munich or with the national team. That was great to see. And now it's for me about make the next step, improve yourself. The big goal is for me, work on the highest level. And it means, uh, for example, Premier League, when I have the choice or when you come from Germany, then of course Bundesliga is also a big goal. Could Sheffield Wednesday even uh, go to the Premier League under you, do you think? Yeah, we have to do a lot of uh, things right. The competition in the Championship, it's, it's tough. But I saw also the last season, if you ever run, you can take the momentum with you. Then there's always a chance. And uh, the, especially uh, with, with Sheffield Wednesday, you have uh, a great, great uh, Supporters, uh, I think they are dreaming for more. But again, we have to do a lot of things right. Uh, we have to play good football. We have to sign good players. And we have to develop the club step by step, also in different phases like uh, facilities and so on. And if we do this, then why not? Yeah. Yeah. And do, do you think the owner is fully believing in the project now and fully behind it with the momentum you've created? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I think that was the reason why maybe he, he got me the, the offer to extend my contract. I think we both, uh, the owner and, and my person, we, we dream from the Premier League uh, one times. And if uh, we make good steps forwards, then uh, there's, a, there's a chance, of course. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time, Danny. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure to be part of, of uh, your podcast. And yeah, thank you. Thank you for listening to the Training Ground Guru podcast in association with Huddle. We'll be back next month with another episode. In the meantime, you can follow our latest updates on the website and on Twitter at ground underscore guru.